Hey everyone, welcome to the 25th Easy Excel tutorial, part of easyprogramming.net. Today we cover the if statement in Excel. Many years ago I went over how the if statement works in C++. The logic in Excel is very similar, uh, but the syntax is a little bit different. In Excel, the if statement is defined as a function that returns one value if true and another if false. The previous few tutorials covered the AND, OR, and the NOT functions in Excel, which only returns a boolean, a true or a false, or in programming terms, a 0 or 1. But if statements lets you uh, take that boolean result and output whatever you like. It removes all logic limitations that the other three functions apply. If statements can be nested, in programming terms these are called the else if statements. In fun if you have a visual representation of what's happening in Excel. So if condition 1 is true, action 1 is done. Else if condition 2 is true, action 2 is done. Else if condition 3 is true, action 3 is done. And you can keep going for as long as you'd like. Um, the last statement is called the else statement which is considered the default if everything else fails if everything else is false what happens here right so let's get to it I have a couple of uh, worksheets set up here um, these are some just some examples to help us go over uh, the first cell here I have already set up uh, the logic here is if a2 if the column a is less than 5 multiplied by 2 else do we can either do nothing or we can display what's in column A. Uh, so let's do both kinds, right? So we'll do else if start every formula the same way. Uh, the little tooltip here gives you a little preview of what it expects. So the first parameter, the first argument is logical text. Logical test, excuse me. Uh, so we'll do if A3 is less than 5, comma. Now what do we do if value is true? We want to multiply it by 2, right? So we'll do A3 times 2 comma else what happens if the value is false let's say we want to just display what's in column A right so 2 is less than 5 so it's multiplied by 2 if we go one more down it'll display 6 because a 4 is not less than 5 it's fail it's false so it goes to the second false statement which in this case returns a 4 if we go down one more it doubles it because column A is less than 5. Uh, like I said before, the the false statement is not necessary. Uh, Excel does not enforce that rule. So let's just do one kind. So we'll do if A6 is less than 5, we need the true statement. What happens if it's true, right? We can just say, you know, output true, or we can just say, uh, again, we'll do A6 times 2. Again, no else statement. No, we're not telling if statement what to do if the output is false. What do you think will happen? If you guess that it'll output just the word false, you are correct. Because there's nothing to do, right? Uh, if statement is a logical function checking to see if something is true or false. So let's just go down. There you go. We have three false because these are all greater than five. And we didn't tell the if statement what to do if it's false. So it'll just output false. Uh, like I said before, if statements can be nested. Uh, this is a little bit complex. You can have as many if statements as you like within within itself. Uh, so I have a little syntax here. If uh, column D is less than zero, uh, we'll just display what's in column D. Uh, I should change that to D. Right. Okay. Else, if uh, column D is less than 10, we'll do D2 times 2. Else if uh, column D is greater than 10, we'll have it. Half, half it. Right? So let's do this. It's a nested statement. So we'll do if. If D3 is less than or equal to 0, we want to just display it. Right? Comma. Value false. So we'll nest it again. So if D3 is less than or equal to 10. This will only trigger if the first value is false. So it won't do more than one, one at a time. If value is false, value of true will do D3 times 2, right? We want to uh, double it, comma. And what do we do if that's false? We can nest another if statement here. So, so if D3 is greater than 10, which is pretty much everything else, comma, we'll do d3 times 
excuse me, divided by two, right? We'll half it. Uh, if you do a comma, it'll go to value false, but like I said, it, Excel does not enforce that. Uh, you don't always need it, especially if you're covering every possible output. Uh, like here, I, if it's less than zero, if it's less than ten, if it's greater than ten, I'm covering every number there is, no matter what the number is. So we can close it. Uh, it's good practice to close all of your parentheses. Uh, it highlights, uh, as you can see, it's red here. Uh, these are purple, and at the end, it's black. To close all of your parentheses, Excel should close them for you. But if you ever get an error or a warning message telling you that you didn't complete your statement, it's because you forgot to close your parentheses. So let's press OK. So there we go, because D3 is less than or equal to 10, uh, it's multiplied by 2. The first uh, logic here did not trigger because it's not less than or equal to 0. So let's just go all the way down. Let's autofill, and you can see it, right? This is doubled, this is doubled, this is halved because it, this is uh, greater than uh, 10. This is greater than 10, so this is halved. Uh, 50. Yeah, this might be a little bit off. You know what? This is uh, this is where the typo comes in. I made a typo here, so it should not display D2. It should actually display D3, right? It's relative. The answer there is the same. We just didn't notice. Let's just copy it all the way, and we should see some values change. Um, so it this is less than zero, so it just displayed these numbers. Uh, this is less than ten, so it displayed this. Uh, we didn't see the the error in the first four. Uh, cells here because uh, the typo was only made in the first logic, uh, the first um, conditional statement, which was already false, so it skipped over it, and the rest of the formula was true. So this is a lesson in checking your functions, checking your formulas, make sure you have everything correct, right? So you can do calculations. You can keep this nested if statement going for as long as you like, right? Okay. If statements can also do text output, so it doesn't have to be calculations, you don't have to output numbers, you can output text as well. Uh, I have a little sample set up here. If, if it's greater than or equal to 5, it'll just display it's greater than or equal to 5, otherwise it's less than 3, right? So let's write it up. So if A3 is greater than or equal to 5, comma, it'll output all string text should be in quotes, otherwise it'll treat them, you, might, you may get errors and warnings, may not work. Uh, we'll try one later on. If true, we'll say it's oops, so greater than or equal equal to five. Else, it's less than five. Right? Let's close the parentheses, and there we go. It's less than five. If you do it all the way down. You can double check. No, it's greater than or equal to 5. There it is, right? Uh, let's say what happens if you don't put the quotes. You get an error. It says, we found a problem with your formula. Try clicking the insert function of the formula. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You can read through it. Press OK. And it's pretty much undone. It won't let you submit because this is not valid. You need to have the quotes around strings. There we go. Uh, let's try one more. This is a nested if statement with text. Uh, I have three levels here, uh, including a false statement at the end. So we do if D2 is 5, say it's 5. If it's 3, it's 3. If it's 6, it's 6. Otherwise, it's something else. So we'll do if. So D3, sorry. If D3 equals to 5, comma, uh, it's 5, comma, else if false. So we'll do another if statement, which is the else if statement. So we'll do if d3 is equal to 3, we'll write it's 3. Else if d3 is excuse me, equal to 6, we'll do comma, it's 6, right? Else, now this is the else statement, we don't need to do an else if again. We'll do else, it's something else, right? So comma, comma, excuse me, parentheses, parentheses, and parentheses, close them all, right? There we go. It's three. Go down a couple. It's something else, it's five, it's something else, it's five, right? Go all the way down, something else, something else, six. Pretty neat, right?
you can keep going for as long as you like. The if statements have no limits. You can also combine them with the and, or, and the not functions to do even more, to make your uh, your logic even more complex to do to to get better, more precise answers. If you like, you can do multiple uh, multiple logics in one if statements rather than doing a billion uh, nested if statements. Uh, well, that, that there is uh, to the if statement. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I will upload this to easyprogramming.net so you have an idea of how the if statement works. You can download this. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm always happy to help. The if statement is really worth knowing. Uh, please visit my website at easyprogramming.net. If you want to see a topic, particular topic covered, please let me know. I am more than happy to oblige. I will do my best to fit that into my schedule. Thanks for watching.